Hi, Coach Henson. Um, the Kansas program obviously speaks for itself, and I, I was just curious, you know, with the role that you had as director of basketball operations, how you feel like that kind of different role than you've, you've done in, in past coaching jobs you've had, you know, will, will play in here and, and get you ready for the job and the rebuilding effort you have here at SIU. If you guys will help me out and tell me your first name so I can call you. Sure. Um, Kelly Burke, WSIL-TV. Hi, Kelly. Uh, this is what I would say, Kelly. I've been to practice for four years. Every day I got to go to practice. Uh, where's our NCAA compliance officer? I never coached while I was on the floor at Kansas. I always just stood to the side. Uh, well, let's make sure we have clarification there. But to be a part of that program and to sit on the bench and to sit there during the games, uh, you know, I, I just think that's great experience. And uh, to be a part of that and to see what we've done, I was part of four straight Big 12 championships that added on and accumulated to eight Big, tra Big 12 state champion or Big 12 championships. And then, of course, it just culminated last week going to the Final Four. So. Uh, I hope that's enough experience because I tell you what, I've learned an awful lot. Les Winkler, I'm the sports editor of the Southern Illinois. Um, Mario went over your record. And your, and, um, that 2006 snub with the, with the NCAA committee, how, how, much, how much is that a motivating factor in, in, in terms of the NCAA tournament? Uh, is, is this just something you feel like you've got to prove? I don't think I can use the term that I, I Greg, can I, that I told the committee. Uh, I said, I don't think you're going to hire one coach that's going to come into this program that's more <laughs> perturbed than I am. Uh, that, that's, uh, isn't that good, Greg? Isn't that, okay, I just want to make sure, good paraphrase there. But uh, you know what? I, I get tired. Every year I'm on the treadmill during the NCAA tournament, and I'm watching those conference championships being played, and I'm sitting there, and I'm in there, or I'm with coaches, and it'll flash up. Top five RPI teams never to get in the NCAA tournament. 21, 34, and 36. And three of those are my teams. <laughs> I'm not really happy about that. So is it a motivating factor? You doggone right it is. Marv Corson, uh, Carbondale Times. Uh, will you be using a similar offensive and defensive scheme that you use at Southwest Missouri, or is it going to be some kind of hybrid or something new? Well, Marv, I tell you what I think we're going to do. We're trying to do is everything that we do at Kansas right now offensively, which was pretty much similar to what we did at Missouri State but with a few wrinkles. But uh, I think, uh, to be quite frank, I think I'm just going to try to follow that recipe if that's okay. Hi, Coach. Um, I'm sure you're probably anxious to maybe get this question out of the way. It has to be asked, but a, a lot has been said about Bruce Weber and this job, and I was just wondering, you know, how that played into your decision and, and, and if it did at all, everything that was going on with that. Well, I don't know about getting the question out of the way. I kind of like the question. According to my multiple sources, which were my wife and my mother, I was the first choice here. <laughs> That's just what my multiple sources reported. Let's, let me tell you this, and let me tell all of Saluki Nation, I think Bruce Weber's a heck of a coach. And if Bruce Weber would have wanted to come back to Southern Illinois, fantastic. That's great. And maybe in my notes I should have just thanked Bruce Weber as well. But uh, I will say this. I know this. I know when I got the phone call that Mario offered me the job, I was extremely happy. And... Uh, I'm glad to be your coach. It's kind of a two-parter. Uh, first of all, when you met with the players, what did you tell them? And what was the reaction of the recruits when you spoke to them? Do you have any indication of whether they'll both come? Well, I'm at 50% I'm at because I've only spoke to one of the two. And I told him I was excited. And he said, well, I'm really excited, coach. So I said, well, let's, let's do this in interpretation you want to be my point guard, you want to be my starting point guard, for, or not starting, you want to be my point guard for the next four years? I said, you're going to have to earn the starting part. You want to come in here and play and be a quarterback? And he said, yep. So I, I think that means he's coming. And uh, what was the other question? Well, I told him my expectations and how they reacted. I'll let you talk to these guys. 
I mean, you can interview some of these guys afterwards, but I told them, uh, I just asked them a question. I said, how many of you know the difference between right and wrong? And they all raised their hand. And that's pretty much all I need to do, don't you think, guys? Hi, I'm Sam Dyes from WIDB Sports Director there. Uh, my biggest question I wanted to know is, what is the biggest thing you really want to improve with the play on the court right now from what you've seen so far? Well, I, I haven't seen anything, guys. I, I haven't. Uh, that, that would be unfair for me to sit here and tell you that I watched all your games because that's not right. I, I, uh, you know, I'm, I was at Kansas. I, I didn't have an opportunity. I saw one game this year. I watched Tim Jankovic's team come in here and get their tails whipped by the Southern Illinois Salukis, and uh, I watched that game because Tim Jankovic is one, ver- one of my very close friends, and I watched the guys, and that's the only game that I got to see. To be quite frank, it's a pretty good game to watch in, uh, on my end now. It's for Mario, Bob Cyphers, Saluki Talk. Um, a couple of questions about what you mentioned at the podium. Uh, how was the job perceived overall going in on your search? And number two, you mentioned about Coach Hinson and the interview process, the passion, how you and the Chancellor were very respectful and appreciative of that. If you could talk about those two things. Sure. You know, the, uh, the first question, how the job is perceived out there, uh, it's perceived very, very high. You know, as, as the Chancellor said, we were keeping track every time there was a job that would come open, would add it to the list or fill in the box when it got filled and would kind of figure out, hey, which jobs are, you know, which jobs are paying more, which are perceived as the best. I mean, we're obviously in a tremendous league, and I think we're at a place that has the opportunity to win the league every year, year year in and year out. There wasn't a whole lot of teams on that list of 30. So we've got a lot of telephone calls. Uh, Obviously, some of our uh, salary structure had changed, you know, from our from uh, our last situation. So we were dealing maybe with a different group, but a ton of uh, people were interested. Uh, Associate head coaches from uh, BCS schools, things like that, former head coaches. So we received an awful lot of uh, of uh, of uh, inquiry Um, as far as the uh, passion displayed. You know, I like that. Um, I like somebody with a chip on their shoulder. I like somebody who wakes up every day and says, hey, what can I do to win because I've got to, you know, I've, I want to prove something. I think, you know, driving people, you look at, that's kind of the region we're in. I mean, most of our staff, that's what drives them too. You get up in the morning, you say, hey, how can we beat Illinois State? How can we beat you and I? How can we beat Creighton? We're friends with them most of the time, but when we compete, what's going to give us the be- best edge? And to have a head coach who has that drive is something that was very important, at least me personally, to hear that come across in the interview process. And quite frankly, when other people you know, would call on their behalf and just drive home the fact that, uh, hey, Coach Henson has an unbelievable drive to prove himself, I think that can be a tremendous motivator for future success. Uh, Coach uh, Tim Harkovich, WIDB Sports. Um, how does it feel to be back in the Missouri Valley? And do you think there'll be any bit like of an adjustment period since you know you've been at a you know a BCS school with uh, Kansas for four years and coming back to like uh, what they you know mid major with Missouri Valley? Well, I don't know about the adjustment period, but uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, without question. I, I've been very public about how I feel about this conference, and uh, I just love it. And when I said I want to come home, that's what I meant. Uh, I mean, I, I've been at the top level of college basketball there at Kansas, and uh, I hope it speaks volumes of how bad I wanted to get back into this league. You know, I've had opportunities uh, in the four years that I've been out. I've had opportunities to be a coach somewhere else. I've had an opportunity to be a head coach. They weren't the right job for me. And when this job came open, specifically in the Missouri Valley Conference, and knowing what I know about Carbondale, and I, I really wanted this job. And I, and I, I tried as best as I could do that to present that to everybody that I ran across. And we did a great job. I I, want to tell you, Mario and Chancellor did a great job because they kept this quiet for a good period of time. And and that was really important to me because I told them from the very word start, I don't need my name in the paper. I don't need my name out there. I don't want to be mentioned. I I don't have, I don't want an ego like that. I just want to be your coach. and, uh, And, you know, thankfully that worked out. Coach, what are your immediate goals for the team for the next year? And also, have you given any thought to who you'll bring on on your staff? Well, that was one of the questions that uh, one of the players asked, and I thought that was a valid question. You know, I I haven't made any decisions on what we're going to do staff-wise. 
it's kind of been a whirlwind here over the time. So uh, when I get back from New Orleans, then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try to figure out what's the best for our program and what's the best for our players. And then I'll make those decisions at the time. And, uh, you know, we'll just see immediate goals. I want to win. I want to win. I mean, I want to win every game that we play. I mean, I want to come out and prepare to win every stinking game we play. Now, is that possible? Sure, but I mean, I'm also a realist. I mean, a realist, and I understand. But I don't want anybody up there to think that we're just going to try to be average or mediocre. I mean, I don't care who we play. I mean, we're going to try our best to win every time we hit the court. And you know what else we're going to try to do? We're going to try to do our best off the court, uh, in the classroom, in the community, on the floor. And and it's not because that's what's to be said. It's just the right thing to do, and it's what we do. Another two-parter. The first one's real brief. Um, Have you signed a contract already? Are you still technically working for Kansas after the Final Four? And then um, the... uh, the um, the fan base here was not happy the last couple of years. How do you how do you intend to address that and, and get the people happy? Well, I, I had to sign a piece of paper before I walked in here. <laughs> well, check with Debbie to see if we violated any laws by signing the contract. I don't... No, I've signed the contract. I'm going to work for the University of Kansas until. Monday night at about 11 o'clock, if that's okay with you. (laughs) Uh, Coach, good afternoon. Daniel Valle, WSIU Sports. Um, What is one key value that you're going to stress to your players in the the coming year, whether it be, you know, staying in school, communication, or work ethic? Is there any one of those that you will stress out to your players in the coming year? Well, Daniel, there's, there's so many variables with that. I mean, there's going to be so many things that we stress. But I met with Justin uh, Bocott this morning because I wanted Justin, and I'm going to meet with Mamadou later. I said that right, didn't I? Okay. Uh, because I want them to know that I, I know I'm not their coach, but I want them to graduate. And I, I talked to Justin this morning. I just said, I expect you and Mamadou and, and Hopefully Mamadou's walking this, watching this on Saluki Vision. But uh, I expect them to go to class every day, and I expect them to graduate. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them, as well as their parents, I'm going to do everything we can do that they have a degree that will last them for the rest of their lives. As far as these gentlemen here, as far as these young men over here, I expect the same thing out of them. And I, I go back to what I just said. They know the difference between right and wrong. And I, you know what, I looked at the chalkboard behind me and I just said, you know what, I don't know what's happened in the past. I, I really don't. I don't care. It only happens what happens from today. And uh, I promise our professors they'll all be in class tomorrow and uh, they'll be ready to go. And uh, they're going to be sore by the end of the week because we're going to start lifting our tails off. The part about the fans part about the fans? Yeah, getting the fan base back under the Saluki tent. Well, I'm sorry they've been unhappy, and I'm going to do everything I can do to make them happier. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you do it by winning. And, uh, you know, uh, Greg, I'll I'll just have to tell this story. Greg asked me this question in the interview. He said, Barry, we have a problem right now in our community of reaching out and probably being a part of the community and communicating with them. Do you think that you can communicate with our community and our fan base? And we've been in there pretty near an hour and 15 minutes, I think. Isn't that right, Greg? And I looked at him and I said, Greg, do you think I'm going to have a problem communicating with anybody on our fan base? (laughs) And he said, no, I don't think so. The best way to get these people back is for us to work our tails off and do our very best. And I promise you we'll do that. I'm Todd Hefferman from the Southern Illinois, and uh, my question is actually for, for Mario, and it's kind of for, for Barry as well. But uh, Mario, of all the, I don't doubt Barry's background and his experience. But from all the candidates you had, you could have hired. Uh, he hasn't been actively recruiting or coaching for the last four years. Now, was that a big factor in your decision, or was there something that Barry had that w- didn't even make it a factor for you? Well, you know, I think in um, when you're conducting a search. You really rely on, on talking to a lot of people. 
and uh, you know people in coaches' background. You know, obviously some people are going to be advocates. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach, you know, Self or Coach Roy Williams weren't going to be advocates for Coach Henson. But I also take them at their word as well. But I think you know when you talk to, we've also got some personal ties in the recruiting world. You know, we had a tremendous student athlete here named Brian Mullins, whose father Mike uh, is a. Uh, uh, not only is a supporter of our program and a great guy, but he also uh, runs one of the top AAU programs in Chicago. And it was wonderful to be able to vet all of the candidates through him, and as well as some other folks in Texas. You know, we've got uh, the Trout Whitman Center. You know, they're heavily involved in uh, AAU programs there as well. So to talk to people in the recruiting world to say, hey, you know what? Sure, coach. You know, by the letter of the law, cannot recruit. But has he recruited before? I mean, you look at a guy named Kyle Weems. Player of the Year last year, Coach Henson recruited him. You know, you look at all those teams, all those players, um, I don't think you win all those games without the ability to recruit. Um, and certainly by talking to people in their background, talking to people in the world of, of recruiting, specifically AAU coaches, I think you can formulate an opinion. And then when you talk to the guy and say, gee whiz, when I talk to this guy and have interactions with him through the six years I've been with the league, do I think, would I be impressed with him? Is he somebody that's personable, could sell me on a vision, could get me on campus so we could see these wonderful facilities? After that, take all those factors, I have no doubt whatsoever that Coach Henson can recruit at the highest levels to be successful in the conference. Coach, you're infamous for your barbecuing skills. I had read that you have your own smoker, and I was just wondering if you plan to continue that tradition at, at SIU. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to worry about coaching basketball, and maybe every once in a while we'll pull the trailer out. But, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll continue. I'll probably do it more in my backyard and for my neighbors than anything. But I will say this. The first people I barbecue for is going to be right there, those guys right there. So uh, I can promise you that. I'll take care of my guys. <laughs> Coach Henson, it's Bob again. Um, one of the problems we've had in the last couple of years as you've been enjoying success at Kansas and we've been struggling is our recruiting base has changed from high school kids to junior college and transfer players. I think in a three-year span, we gave 10 scholarships to JUCOs and transfers. They may have a role here, but does that number seem a little bit excessive to you? And what will be your recruiting philosophy? Well, Bob, first of all, you know, I just want the best players. And I'm not going to label a kid a transfer, a junior college, a four-year, a five-year. But I will say this. The success of this conference goes back to guys like Darren Brooks. The success, to be successful in the Missouri Valley Conference, it's really important that you have the foundation of fourth- and fifth-year seniors in your program as much as possible. In order for us to do that, that means that we have to recruit incoming freshmen, we have to use a red shirt program, and we have to do a sprinkling of whether transfers or junior college players, and we have to put together the puzzle like that. I told the committee, and I don't mind telling our family here today, I'm not into quick fixes. I, I, made that, I, I made that a strong part of our interviews. I'm not into quick fixes. And I, I want to make sure that we do it right. We get the best kids that help our program and the best kids that represent our program. And I want, to, I want to say this. Where's Jeff? Jeff, are we rebuilding? We're not rebuilding. And that's what Jeff, because Jeff's going to be one of my seniors next year. And I said, do you want me to use the term rebuilding? I'm not into that term. I don't like that term. We, Jeff and I, we're on the same page. We just want to win because he's one of my seniors next year. Hey, Coach Henson, uh, uh, what are, your, what are your thoughts on scheduling? You know, you've seen the, the, how easy it can be sometimes when you're at Kansas, but you've also been in the Valley and know how difficult it is to get a good opponent sometimes. Are you a fan of two-for-ones or, or buy games or trying to get the best opponent possible? If you go back and, and look, and, and Doug would be the best one, you could actually ask him this question. If you go back and look at what we did at my previous employer, we played – one of, if not the toughest schedule, each year, year in and year out. Now, I've coached 11 years, and in that 11 years, I think we've only played two non-D1s. One of those was at Southwest Missouri. One was at Oral Roberts University, whereas a lot of conferences these days, you can only imagine they're playing anywhere from two to four. 
We're going to play the very best schedule that we can, not only for our players that prepares us for Missouri Valley Conference play, but also for our fan base. And I, I really like to play local area schools as much as possible. I'm so happy that we're playing St. Louis. Uh, I think that's important that we keep that going on. I would love to play Memphis, uh, but I've been on the other side. I know. I've been on the other side. They're not going to play you at Carbondale. And you have to really, you have to be creative as much as you can. So let's try to play the very best mid-major programs that we can and do the very best that we can there. And so our schedule set, uh, Doug was telling me, we've got kind of a schedule set for the next two or three years. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us a while maybe to get some teams in here. But uh, I certainly want to play great competition. Coach, I just wanted to know, uh, what are your current thoughts about the SIU-Creighton rivalry so far? Pardon? What are your thoughts about the SIU and Creighton Blue Jay rivalry to this well, point, at least? Well, it's funny you mention that because Greg McDermott called me last night and congratulated me, and I said, Greg, those days of you shooting 76% in our facility are over. <laughs> I, I say that with, with, with a, a sense of sarcasm, but uh, I, got, uh, I got Dana Altman text me last night. I heard from Greg McDermott. I heard from uh, uh, several people in the Valley, a lot of assistants in the Valley. And uh, I go back. It's, uh, Greg said, welcome back. And when I say I wanted to come home, that's exactly what I meant. Because when I go into a recruit's home and I tell them and I sit there in front of that family and maybe they're thinking about they want to play in a BCS conference. And then I explain to them that when you play at Illinois State, there's going to be nine to 10,000 people. When you play at Bradley on that hockey arena floor where they serve alcoholic beverages, it's going to be unbelievable when you come out of that tunnel in front of 9,000 people. When you play at Drake, it's going to be sold out. When you play at Northern Iowa, it's going to be sold out. When you play at Creighton, it may not be sold out. There just may be 16,700 people. That's all. When you play at Missouri State, I think there's a good chance when we play at Missouri State this year, it may be a sellout. I know when we play Missouri State here this year, it better be a sellout. (laughs) So when when I speak of this conference, when I speak of these coaches, I do have a passion because I absolutely love the Missouri Valley Conference. And it is where I want to be. And thank goodness a chancellor and an athletic director asked me to do it. Thank you. Hey, Coach, Joe Ragusa, Daily Egyptian. Uh, have you given any consideration to how your assistant coaching staff will be comprised? Yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I, I tried to answer a while ago. I think what we'll do is we'll, I'll take the next couple of weeks and I'll try to figure out and, uh, what we're going to do, what's best. Uh, I, know, I know I met Anthony today for the first time. I know Brad because Brad helped kick my butt a bunch in games. And he's, still, he's still the only guy, though, we wanted to attack on ball screens. We said never go ball screen anywhere near Falker. Falker, just go Brad scre- Brad, uh, ball screen where Brad's at. So, uh, no, I just give it a credit. And I know Ron Smith real well, and uh, I met Matt before. So, you know, we'll make some decisions. I promise you this, we're going to do what's best for the program. Mario, this is for you. Uh, how, much, uh, how much was uh, Coach Henson's familiarity with the Valley part of the equation? I think it was pretty important. You know, we certainly looked at the Midwest, uh, obviously for recruiting, for familiarity. But, you know, the Missouri Valley Conference, even when you talk to other coaches outside of the conference, the reason why we've had so much success, a lot of people will tell you, is that this is a scouting league. You know, we have very, very good coaches, very, go- very good of uh, breaking down film, uh, analyzing uh, and exploiting other teams' weaknesses. And I think somebody who's got that familiarity is, uh, was a big deal. Now, look, every coach does that. But if you just ask around, you know, the Valley is known as a scouting league, you know, and that's, that's why we've had our success. That's why we're the, you know, number eighth-ranked conference, you know, uh, in relationship to all the, you know, what, the 32 conferences out there. So uh, that, that did have something to do with it. And, uh, you know, another funny thing, we were, we were out here ready to come out, and Tony Young came down here. I, coach thought he had another year of eligibility, but uh, he did not. <laughs> but we were looking for it. Tony emailed me yesterday, and he said, Coach, I don't know if you remember. And I said, yeah, I remember you. You were a pain in my butt. Uh, 
Uh, Evan Collins, WIDB. Uh, good afternoon to all three of you. Uh, my first question is for Mr. Mochia. Um, my question was like before, or how much longer, um, or how much earlier before you actually made the phone call to Coach Henson? Did you decide that he would be the head basketball coach? And the second question is for Coach Henson. Uh, what's the one thing that Saluki fans should know about you? Well, you know, talking about Coach, I think uh, once the four candidates uh, had came into Carbondale, um, uh, you know, we were we kind of got together with the boss, with the chancellor. You know, she let me know some of her thoughts. So I think you're mentally deciding, you know, which ones you're putting them kind of in an order. And uh, certainly got the boss's thoughts, gave her my recommendations. She said, yeah, I think so. And uh, so pretty much immediately after the last person was in, it allowed us to make our decision. So it didn't take too much time after, you know, finally fighting, getting all the candidates into Carbondale. I think the best way to answer that question is that, you know what, I, I just feel like I'm a positive person. You know, I, I just, you know, this water bottle's half full. It's not half empty. And uh, uh, this place here is a, is a pretty special place. And I know that. I know that. And uh, I, I really, really wanted this basketball job. And I pursued it in every avenue that I could without bugging Chancellor and without bugging Mario. Uh, I, I, I really conveyed to them how bad I wanted to be here. My last questions, I promise. One for Mario, one for Barry. Um, Barry, other than the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup seating complex that you recall, what memories do you have of bringing the Bears in here, some special games or <laughs> some moments? Because I know there were a couple of games I was screaming at you on the sidelines. You probably don't remember. And Mario, when the uh, tweet ban went off this morning, uh, you posted, we're going to do everything possible we can do to get this turned around. Other than hiring Coach Henson, what else is in that everything possible world? You want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I'll take that first. Um, yeah, I've been laying off Twitter. I'll, I'll, I'll teach Coach what that is uh, until uh, the search. And, and it was interesting. I saw when the news was hitting today, um, you know, you certainly can't get wrapped up in this, but when you see the things that Jay Billis said, uh, Andy Katz, Doug Gottlieb, um, a lot of the basketball pundits around the country and they can be going one way or the other and when I was waking up you know early this morning I was telling Heidi wow really positive wow really positive wow one of our players just retweeted you know Treg retweeted what uh, what Billis is saying all unbelievably positive about coach you know made me made me feel really well feel really good um, you know the everything I think is this hey we can't be ashamed of saying where the program's at I mean, we've been in eighth ninth or ninth, eighth, and ninth place. That is something that the Salukis cannot be. I mean, you look at Doug Elgin, that is an impact to the city of St. Louis during the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. But more, we had the fans expect excellence from the basketball program, and they should. I mean, as I said, we went to six straight NCAA tournaments recently. There only 13 programs in the country went to six straight at that point in time. And there's no reason with facilities upgrade with the right coach, with uh, our recruiting, uh, things like that. Well, we can't get back there. Maybe not necessarily tomorrow, but it won't be forever. You know, I think we can turn this around, you know, in a decent period of time. Um, but I do think it starts with going to class. It starts with getting our, getting our mojo back in the, in the community. You know, we've got some great kids. We want to get them in front of our fans. You know, I think that's something we didn't do as much. We want to, we want to, we want to get better in the classroom. We want to introduce the community to our kids. And, you know, we want the head coach to get out, press the flesh, meet people, uh, engage with folks, ask them to come back and support us. And I'm going to do the same thing, too. I'm going to ask our fans to come back and support us. And I know we're going to have a head coach who's going to do that in our entire region. So that's the, that's the other stuff that I was referring to. Bob, I'll answer this. I, I'll never forget, Greg, I told Greg this when we were in the uh, interview room. I'll never forget Josh Warren making a three right there, one of only two that he made the entire year to beat us by one. But the game wasn't over. The most memorable part of that was a big kid out of the student section runs out on the floor to celebrate the victory, and there's still time left on the clock. And Don Daly has already run through the tunnel, and we've still got like five-tenths of a second, so I definitely remember that game. 
And then I'm sitting here, crouched down, and it's as quiet as can be. And this was the old student section right here. And there's a girl that yells at our bench. It's just SIU shooting free throws. And I'm, I'm just kind of down. And she yells at me, hey, coach, or hey, Coach Henson, where's the rest of your torso? <laughs> and I look out on the floor, and my players leaned over on the free throw are laughing so hard. <laughs> and I look down at the bench, and our kids are covering up because they're laughing and I finally just, I looked at her, and I just finally had to say, that's a good one. <laughs> Those are my two most memorable moments. Uh, Chancellor Chang, this is actually a question for you, although I would like your thoughts on this I'm as well, shocked. Mario. <laughs> I know, you haven't gotten a lot of questions yet today. So, um, We've talked a lot about how the uh, financial constraints in the university have really affected the bottom line for the school. Uh, how much of a role did those play in hiring a coach for uh, the contract that Hinson has signed, and with any of the finalists, did it come down to not being able to afford any of them? We went in uh, to uh, this process knowing that we had financial constraints, and we were upfront with all of the uh, candidates um, uh, about that. Uh, so we weren't about um, um, mirroring the contract of the past. We were creating something very different. Uh, and so money did not come down uh, to uh, a, uh, a, an up or down with anyone uh, who was in the pool because uh, every one of those candidates knew that uh, we were uh, putting together a fair but modest uh, 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 package uh, for, for the uh, next coach. Um, there is plenty of room in uh, the contract for incentives, uh, for uh, academics, for incentives, for uh, winning, uh, going deep into the tournament. Boy, you know, we'll, 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 uh, we'll make sure we share revenue on that. Uh, but uh, uh, clearly, uh, I didn't have any sense that anybody was coming in saying that they were going to play us for more money. Um, I would like to say also that um, this, is, this is an exceptional university. Uh, there is high quality in every, every dimension of this university, and uh, we approached this hire to make sure that men's basketball was a shining star. Barry, when you told Coach Self, I was just wondering what his reaction was and what he had to, to tell you. Well, I think when I told him, I, basically, uh, we, we weren't done really till I don't think like 5.30 last night because I, I didn't want to do anything until we had uh, finished the contract. And, you know, I walked in and, and, and I, I told our players this. I, I'm, not, I'm not really a thermostat. I'm a thermometer. You could pretty much read me the way I am. And I, I walked in and he said, you got, got any news? Got any news? I mean, he's, he would walk by my office and, and coach and guy that sits, I mean, every 15 minutes, heard anything? Heard anything? Have they called? Have they called? And I mean, I'm starting to get nervous. I mean, I, and then the last, the last year he goes, Barry, this isn't good. This isn't good. I'm just telling you, this is not good. And he's a pretty good poker player, I might say, too. So uh, I don't know, golly, maybe it's not good. And then Mario called and I, my heart just started beating. But uh, I finally went in there about 5.30 and I said, hey, coach, it's done. And he just, uh, he was emotional with me and, uh, you know, it was just a, it was just one of those uh, great moments, and he said he said I'm proud of you, and uh, he just said you deserve this. He said uh, he said uh, I'm really happy for you, and he is. He's genuinely happy. I'll tell you this story. Uh, I think people need to know this, uh, and I think this will explain who Bill Self really is. We win a game and beat North Carolina to go to the Final Four. We have gone through the line and shook all the hands. And he turns to me and hugs me and says, the only way this could be better is if you get the job. Now, that's Bill Self. He wasn't a coach. He wasn't my boss. He is like a brother. And I love him. And he rescued me when I needed to be rescued. Uh, and my wife wanted me to be rescued because I was driving her nuts I mean, when you actually take every grocery ad and put down a schedule of which grocery stores to hit on what day, that's time when you need to get another job. 
uh, coach uh, over here. Hi. Um, has um, talking about the congratulatory, um, you know, with um, Coach Greg McDermott from Creighton um, congratulating you. Has um, Chris Lowry contacted you um, in congratulating? If so, um, has he given you any? Um, you know, advice on SIU, any of the players or anything like, of that sort? I haven't talked to Chris, but this, I'll tell you exactly what I told the players, and, I, and I, I will say this. Chris Lowry is not a friend. Chris Lowry is a good friend. And I'll leave it at that. We have time for one more question. Uh, Chancellor, this one's for you again. Um, if, I know this is a positive occasion, but if the program doesn't make the turnaround that everybody's hoping for, Will more drastic changes be made in the future? This is a, this is a program that has all of the foundation. Uh, and as Coach uh, uh, and uh, Mario and I talked through this whole process, uh, we knew that there were dimensions of academics, there were dimensions of community outreach, uh, there were uh, issues with uh, um, uh, organization, uh, for uh, approaching the whole program. Um, it isn't a program that needs to be, what was the term, rebuilt? It's a program that needs to grow from uh, the foundation that it has. Um, as you approach every aspect of a university, and as a chancellor, um, uh, Mario and I often talk that athletics isn't the show. You know, the show is really academics. Uh, however, uh, athletics plays a, a really, really important role in a public research university. Uh, it is a, a great contributor to student life and a huge uh, outreach to our community, our alums, our donors, and our friends. And uh, this has to be an exceptional program. Uh, when you uh, go down the list of the sports programs uh, that uh, SIU sponsors and take a look at our our football program, take a look at our softball program, take a look at our track and field, uh, take a look at tennis, golf. We, we have great programs. Did I, did I leave something out? Probably. Uh, women's basketball. So we really absolutely need to have men's basketball shine, and uh, I know we've got the right pieces in place, and we've got a good foundation.